Hello, everybody. Jim Malone here, coming to you live on Dallas Trading Floor. It is a Thursday, and the market is uh, kidding. Is seeming to be a little bit, um, yeah, a little bit, a little bit weak. Uh, definitely got kicked out of a few things, um, but uh, you know, and uh, it looks as if we are seeing a bit of weakness. I don't know if that's for the stimulus reasons. Uh, you know, they're having trouble surpassing the stimulus plan, and of course, the uh, the market was kind of. You know, looking forward to um, you know to that. So it, there has been a little bit of sell-off. Um, you know, and I think and we might be getting a little bit weaker, depending on you know if there's more acrimony in some of the houses. So let's uh, you know let's take a kind of a look at uh, you know at the slides and see you know kind of where you know where we can go today. Uh, this uh, slide was taken just a few minutes ago. And the market direction, it, we're still in a confirmed uptrend, but um, the NASDAQ is off a bit. Uh, also, the S&P is down a little bit. Dow Jones is up. There was a pop on Disney. Uh, the uh, number of subscribers to Disney Plus came in a whole lot better than they than they thought. Uh, and uh, so, you know, that's looking, you know, that's, that's looking... Um, you know that that made uh, made me Disney pop a little bit. I still think though that you know there may be some issues uh, regarding Disney because of the COVID thing with their with their um, you know with so many of their parks shut down. But uh, you know we'll see about that. You know how how that uh, how that uh, uh, works out. I want to show you an interesting slide. This is a psychological indicator that I use to see when the market possibly is turning. We've had a pretty long period of up uh, trend here. I think we may be getting to to uh, area that we might have some weakness and this is the um, the, the amount of margin debt that is uh, is is on and um, when when the margin debt spikes that's that's when we tend to see a reversal as you can see the the, uh, the last time it was above 50 percent now what I mean by margin debt is that if you, you can borrow on the stocks that you have to buy more stocks and of course I have a margin account as well but what happens is when the market is starting to pull back the margin debt uh, moves higher and indeed it has moved higher throughout the year it pulled back remember we had that you know the coronavirus thing uh, it pulled back and then it's been steadily building um, since and currently it's at about uh, about 18.88 percent, or about 19 percent. So um, typically, when it gets up to you know in the 30 percent range, I mean, we could definitely see a correction. So that's something to be very concerned about uh, in terms of the market. So we, I don't know, you know, this is not necessarily a market top, but we may be getting close to where, um, you know, we, where we have where we have some weakness. I've been pushed out of a few positions in the small portfolio, and that kind of tells me a little bit that uh, we may have a bit of weakness coming. So, um, you know, I you know, I'm not necessarily going to go down right away, but uh, I think we got to get ready. Possibly, um, I, you know, we're currently in a market in, a, in an uptrend, but we could be in a market uh, under correction here very, very quickly. So uh, you want to be careful with that and set your stop losses very tight because I do think we, we may be moving um we may be moving downward here pretty quickly. The uh, the Nasdaq um, composite, uh, when this slide was taken, is uh, it was down a little bit, um, about 0.8 percent, um, and it seems to be kind of correcting. I don't know if uh, you know if we're starting a leg down. Obviously, we're still at a pretty pretty high level here at uh, 12306. So. We're still pretty good, but uh, you know it. We and I don't know if it's is it started to change character, but I get that feeling that we may be at the beginning of a um, of a market change. The, there have been a several dust distribution days, and so we are starting to. I think I think starting to get a little bit of weakness in the market. Um, uh, this is definitely true in the S and P five hundred. It's down fifteen. 21 today or about 0.41 percent nothing nothing uh you know no no reason to, to get overly excited but uh you know we may have starting we may start to see a breaking of a trend we're starting to see a lot of uh, selling so you know my suspicions are that we may be we may be turning here so we've got to get ready for that uh you know that eventuality here's the portfolio that i have currently uh i did get sold out i got stopped out of tesla today 
Uh, and uh, so I'm not in it, uh, but I did initiate a position in Fiverr. Now it's up a little bit above this. It was 199 when it was here. I did buy a position in Fiverr. I'm in Palantir, Apple, Progeny, uh, and that one went up today. And I did, I did also uh, put another position in Progeny, Blink Charging, which um, you know is still kind of just just hanging out about this 27, 28 dollar level. I have a call on it. I may close this position if, uh, when, if and when that clo- that call is, uh, you know, expired in uh, on January fifteenth. Chopperware uh, down a little bit, but you know, still just kind of hanging in there. And I've done quite well on on uh, on um, Cloudflare uh, symbol NET, but uh, nothing really really overly overly exciting here. So that said, um, you know, would like to get to some of the questions here uh, so let me p- get that ready to go and go right over to uh, the first question um, okay this is a question from uh, TikTok, and it's uh, Robley and let's see what you had to say um, um, okay okay no, this is a uh, Peloton thought to buy well you know I I think Peloton you know, it, it has definitely <coughs> done well. PLTN, of course, is the is the uh, is the um, symbol on that. Let me see if I can get the chart up there for you. Okay, Peloton. Let's see what's Peloton symbol. And Peloton. P-T-O-N, sorry about that. I should have known that right off the top of my head. P-T-O-N is a symbol for Peloton. And it looks like we've pulled back and we're now under the 40-day line. I don't know. This is a little bit dangerous <coughs> to buy it at this point. I think it's heavily extended. It's up today, $2.32 at one sixteen seventy seven. Let's kind of see how it's trading on the daily chart here um, to see, you know, if, if there's anything. Yeah. It's it's hugging the forty it's hugging the forty day line, so that is uh, that is not good. Um, we also have the twenty one day line below the forty day line, so you know basically I don't necessarily think this is time to buy. You need to this thing need to move move about uh, move up to about one thirty nine in order to get a good buy on this one. It has a good checklist though seven out of nine. And the funds seem to be moving into it, which is amazing. Uh, and the industry is, uh, you know, it's very good. It's 21 out of 197, so that's really good. Um, you know, I would watch this this one. I'm, I'm still not convinced, even though it has many really good signs about it. It has a 98 relative strength, and, uh, you know, the funds seem to like it. I mean, uh, we have increasing, uh, you know, we have increasing sales, which is good, and we do have very much increasing funds. So, um it, I just don't think it's really ready. Um, if if this is buyable, it's going to be buyable at this consolidation base. It's going to have to go above 139 for it to be buyable. So I'd be very careful uh, with Peloton right now. I think it could move lower, um, even though even though it's done extremely well up until now. So it just you know it's just too difficult to figure it out at the moment. Um, Luciano, thoughts on Baidu, B-I-D-U. And, of course, this is one of the Chinese stocks. Um, let's look at it, B-I-D-U. Let's see if we have anything there to go on. Yeah, it's pulled up nicely today. But here's the thing about Baidu. Um, yeah, I, I still am a little bit uh, leery about this. And, and here's why. This is one of the first things I do when I take a look at a stock. I open up the weekly chart, and then I look to see what the general trend of the uh, of the stock is and currently we have a we, we we have a downward trend but there was a trend reversal and it was right here when this golden cross happened this red line which is the for, which is the um uh the 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 40 the the 40 day line uh, uh, the 50 day line crossed above the 200 day line so that's that's very good and it's moving right up that 40-day line, so at least it's you know it's 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 quite good. There is a pivot on it, which means that's a buy point at 135. So it's extended above that because it's at 167. So here's the thing about Baidu. 
Um, I just don't think, you know, it, it was a cup with handle. Uh, there was a pivot at 135. It's extended above that. It's a little bit dangerous to buy it at this far extended because it's likely to pull back to that 135 level. So I would watch this one. I don't, I don't think this is in a buy zone right now. And I think you just kind of have to wait on, 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 uh, on Baidu. Unfortunately, it just doesn't, doesn't look right. Um, okay. Hi, Jim. Thoughts on the party, party city. <laughs> okay. Looking up trend. Um, I think I, I remember a question on this one before. Uh, <coughs> PRTY. Of course, this is the company that sets up the party stores, uh, for short periods of time. It does. It looks like it may have had a trend reversal, but let's take a look at it. It's a $5 stock. I don't recommend buying stocks below $15. They're just very difficult to deal with. Uh, but it does have a very nice relative strength at 99 here. Um, you know, and we, we seem to have maybe have turned the corner. Let's look at the daily chart. Okay. Hmm. Let me give the monthly chart. Yeah. It, you know, it, it's seen better days. This is the monthly chart. Uh, it does, but it does have, you know, some very strong support. At, you know, 99 is very good. Um, let's kind of look to see. Yeah, I, I'm a little bit concerned about these sales. The, the, we have declining sales. I don't like that. We do have cash flow, though. That's nice. Uh, and we do have increasing fund ownership. You know, I just can't recommend this one, uh, unfortunately. It's just, it, it, it may be a watch list. Even though it has a high relative strength, I'm, I just don't think this one, you know, it does have six out of nine, so that's good. And it does have increasing fund ownership, barely. Um, you know, it's a five dollars and fifty-two cents. You know, I just, I think you better be a little bit careful with this one. I wouldn't recommend this one. Maybe, maybe keep this in a watch list for a little bit longer. It's just, I don't think this one's ready. Uh, so I can't give you a, a really good clean of bill of health on Party City. Uh, Nvidia, in NVDA, and of course this is a great stock. Uh, NVDA, and this was probably the stock that went has gone up the most this year. Um, I don't know how long anybody's been listening to me, but back in February, I was uh, basically talking about this stock at about the 180 level, and of course, it's way beyond that now. But it seems to be uh, pulling back a bit. It's 518 right now. It's been as high as um, 567, um, and it some, seems to be clinging to the 40-day moving average. But it still does have a uh, relative strength, um, an RS of 88, which is very, very good. Checklist on this one is excellent at 8 out of 9, and the fund ownership is getting much better. So um, can you buy it at this point? Well, you know, the, the ideal place would be the reversal off the 40-day line. It looks like you might have something like that. Uh, we've had two days now where it's, it's been up. Uh, it pulled way back, and then, and then now it looks like it's, uh, you know, it's, like, like it's moving up. I, I want to see it move above this 40-day line, which is currently at about um, 536 before I'd be interested in buying this uh, again. It does have an 88 relative strength. So this is a watch list. I think you're going to, and again, I think you're going to have to wait on this one until it's about above about 535 or 540 uh, in order to buy it because it just seems to be trending. You know, it's just not the right trend yet. So, so again, I apologize for that. Um, you want have ones that you can buy. I don't think NVIDIA, it's the right time for the right NVIDIA, um, you know, it, it, the NVIDIA buy. Uh, so what is the S um, <laughs> So what does it mean? SQQQs may be a good idea. Well, here's the thing about the SQQQ. Whenever the market changes from a confirmed uptrend to a market uh, trend under pressure or a um, marketing correction, the SQQQs typically go up. So as the QQQ, which is the NASDAQ 100, uh, Investment in Assets 100 Trust, which is the uh, 100 largest stocks on the NASDAQ, whenever that goes down, typically the SQQQ goes up. So let's take a look at the SQQQ. Um, we're starting to see a little bit of weakness in the QQQ. So uh, with the SQQQ, that might be a way to play it. But let's look at it. I don't think it's, we don't think we're ready for that yet. Uh, this is really a hedging vehicle. So let's take a look. As you can see, um, the, the, the trend on the SQQ has been down. So, you know, why would you ever buy, you know, you're like, you're thinking to me, well, Jim, why would you ever buy a downward trending chart? Well, normally you don't, but this is kind of a special, this is a special case 
because this um, this basically is I inverse to the uh, in into the QQQ. So if the QQQs go down, this typically will go up. As you can see, it's just been it's just been heading down, and that's because the Qs have been heading up since since March of the uh, you know since March of this year. And right now, um, you know we may see we may see a movement we may see a movement up. But right now, you know we're we're uh, you know on the way down. <laughs> Uh, so it's not ready to you're not ready to buy this. If the market goes into correction, typically in the first one or two days when it goes into correction, the SQQQ will go up. So I just want to you might want to maybe have that on your radar more than anything else. Um, you know it can be good for the it can be good for the radar, uh, but it's not time to buy it now. Okay, hi Jim. Uh, thank you so much for your help on MXR. Thoughts on QDEL? Is it in reversal? Yes. Let's take a look at QDEL to see kind of what is up with that stock. QDEL. Um, let's take a look. Yeah, QDEL. Um, yeah, it still is trending lower. So let's show you the chart that we can take a look at. Um, yeah, it's definitely pulled back to the um, to the black line here. That this black line, everybody, this is the um, this is the 200-day moving average. Now it's bounced off that black line, so it may have a reversal. But you know, I just don't trust this. I want to see a reversal off this this. I want to see it above this red line here first. That's the 40-day moving average uh, in order to buy this. So right now, I just I can't recommend it, even though it does have a very nice relative strength at 91 that's excellent and um we have uh 77 checklist which is excellent seven out of nine criteria for the buying so that's good uh the fund ownership is in, in, is increasing so that's good so i mean it's up six dollars a day so the question is why am i so bearish on this i am not bearish on this um but i do think it's in a bit of a consolidation I really before before I'd be buying this one, I would want to see it above that red line. That's the 40-day moving average. I want to see it above that line before I would buy it. So I have to say I would not buy this one today. I would watch this this one, but the, the question is excellent, and um, you know it's just one of the kind of things. Um, why does it happen when I decide to get in? Well, because typically um, most people lag the market by by a month or so. This is why it's so important to look at indicators and not look at the news because the news will give you a lot of times the wrong impression of, of the market. I think the market, it, it, from, the, from the indicators that I have, it seems as if the market is starting to cool a little bit. Um, and, uh, you know, if it does and, and we have a negative result, for instance, with, um, you know, with something r relative to the um, to the stimulus package, you know, we may we may have a sell-off in the in the market. Now we're not there yet; we're still in a confirmed uptrend. But I am getting, I'm kind of getting the feeling, and and I may be totally wet on this one, but uh, I'm 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 starting to see a bit of weakness in the market. So I'm getting my portfolio ready to be a little bit more defensive than I've been, uh, you know, the, the middle bit more defensive than um, than I've been in the past. Uh, okay. Uh, got got bought out uh, uh, of 80. Well, am I all right? Should I keep on holding? Got oh, I got bought 80 uh, tes of Tesla at two. Oh, my goodness, you should definitely keep on holding. If you have 80 shares of uh, Tesla in your IRA at uh, at two, two fifth, 275, you should definitely keep it. Just just keep it. Don't don't do anything. Uh, don't don't do anything. That is excellent. That's excellent. Uh, Neo. Uh, let's look at Neo today. Neo's been hammered. Uh, I don't know if you know this. To, is you know today it's been it's been sort of hammered. So let's look at Neo um, and uh, see. Uh, yeah yeah definitely pulled back today. It's at forty seven ninety seven. This is the chart here. Uh, oh, that's Neo. That's the Neo chart. And um, let's kind of look at it. Uh, how it stacks up. It's still got a really strong 99 relative strength, so that is excellent. Uh, we do have we do we do have increasing sales like that as well. Um, why can't I get that to work? <laughs> well, goodness, it, my my cursor just seems not to be cooperating today. 
Uh, 77 checklist, so that's good, and the funds are in there. Here's the issue that I have with Neo. There's no real base pattern to buy this off of. The only place you could buy it would be off the 40-day moving average. That's this red line here. Uh, just not a good place to buy it. So I just, I'd be careful. We're also down today, you know, again, it's not a lot. We're only only off about a dollar, but it's a $41 stock. So, you know, that's that's fairly significant in terms of, uh, in terms of percentages, about two and a half percent down today. So I'd be a little bit careful. I don't think it's, you know, I don't, I think it's going to get support at the 40-day line. If there's a reversal off the 40-day line, then I think you might be able to buy it. But right now, I just don't, don't get into NEO. I just, I think that, uh, you know, it may change, but right now, I just, I, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's the right thing uh, to be in uh, right now. Okay. Uh, what do you think about Tesla? Will it pull back and drop again below 600? I'm holding 97 shares at an average of 611. Your thoughts on Tesla, please. Thank you. Okay, I actually got sold out of Tesla today. Um, you know, I've made I've made two bites at the apple. Basically, I wrote it up from uh, about uh, five, uh, four, um, 450 to uh, the pullback at seven uh, at 570. I sold you know most of my positions. I think I think I had six full positions. I went back in. When it when it moved above um, 600, but I've been I've been uh, I've I've been trying to nibble there you know th with one position, uh, but it's just getting keeps keeps getting uh, pushed out. It seems like there's some resistance. I want to see it go above 650 before I'm I'm going to be back in to Tesla. But let's look at the chart uh, here on the daily chart. We're basically um, you know as you can see on on the da on the daily chart, and this is let's. Make sure that we have the right one in here. TSLA is the symbol. Um, on the daily chart, we've we've got the pullback below the 10-day line. Uh, we did have a pullback and a bounce, uh, but we're pulling back again today. So I definitely think that we may be changing direction here. Uh, this this it, it's too early to say. You know, we're gonna we're gonna see about this uh, next week, but it looks as if we are are are, are pulling back. And we could possibly, you know, we could possibly move all the way down to 502 on Tesla uh, in the next two or three weeks. Uh, we possibly could. Now, you would think that when it coming into the S&P, would, it, would uh, it would be stronger, but it just doesn't seem to be the case. So, um, you know, we, we are seeing it looks like a trend reversal now. We'll, now, tomorrow and the next day you're going to tell, but, um, you know, uh, next week is going to tell. But we definitely look like we're getting a pullback. On, on Tesla. So I think it's be very, very careful in entering a position. I basically have liquidated my Tesla positions, um, you know, because I do think that we are getting, you know, we are getting a bit of weakness. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, you know, but I mean, if you're in it, you know, like a 275, no problem. This is not, this is a blip on the horizon. But if you're trading it like I am, then you, you I think you have to be out of it for a little bit of time until, you know, until, until we get back to, um, in, until we get <coughs> until we get back to a better a better a better level. Um, <coughs> question: um, Here's somebody um, from TikTok. Uh, I think it's Krishna. Okay, I have twenty of CrowdStrike. <coughs> so let's look at CrowdStrike. Uh, C R W D. Now this one I I was in, and unfortunately, I got stopped out of this. I had a very tight stop of two and a half percent on this one. Um, so this is CrowdStrike. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, we're pulling back today. We're pulling back four dollars and eighteen cents. <coughs> it looks like we have a potentially a failed breakout here. We we had a cup, and it, it broke out. It looks like, and it looks like it's pulling back at least to that ten dollar that um, that that uh, ten day line. So, oh goodness, uh, I do think I I do think it's going to pull back a little bit more. You might if you if you're down more than. 7% in this, I think you want to, from where you bought it, I think you want to close the position at least temporarily because I do think this one may be, at least in the short term, going lower, holding lower. Um, all right, quick question from Ali. Hi, Jim. Which way is Tesla going in the next couple of weeks? I will be buying. Um, well, you know what? I, I, you know, I'm, looking at the, I'm looking at the chart, and unfortunately, at least from what I'm seeing right now on the chart, with Tesla, uh, I think we are. I think we have had a trend reversal on Tesla. Now, uh, I we'll see if it breaks below, uh, and it and it has been down. Um, you know, there may be some day trading opportunities here, but it looks as if 
Uh, we're pulling back to the, about that uh, 570 level. You know, uh, it looks like we're pulling back that 570. If it blow, if it pulls below 570 and holds, I think it's going to move lower. Let's look at the 60-minute chart. Yeah, you see, there was a pullback three days ago to about five to to about 570. It's pulling back again. If it can't hold this. Um, you know, if if it can't hold the the 590 level, then I think it's probably going lower. Um, you know, who knows how how low it's going to go? I do think it may go as low um, as 545. So, uh, if it can't push beyond that 600 level convincingly, I think it's going to pull back and and back to the range. Now, the last true buy point, the last true buy point was 502. So, we may we may have uh, we may have some weakness. So, I think that. You know, it's just it's just like anything else. It you know it uh, it looks like it's getting weak and pulling back. I'm currently not in the stock. I'm currently out of Tesla altogether. Um, hey, uh, Beam uh, got in at thirty six oh six. Where's the top? Uh, let's look at let's look at B E A M. Um, B E A M. And the Beam Therapeutics. Uh, look at the daily on there. Yeah, this is sort of a blow off top. Um, if you got in at 36, wow, if you got in at 36, this is terrific. Here's what you want to do, Marson. Boy, this is, this is great. Beam Therapeutics, you did, you did good. You did really good here. Uh, if you got in at 36, here's what you want to do. You want to take your stop loss and you want to set it way up. You want to set it 5% above, 5% below uh, the current uh, price at 78.31. You want to set it uh, basically uh, at about um, about 74 or so uh, dollars a share. And if it pulls back, <coughs> you will be sold out. But I think that uh, I think that it's likely to. It looks like it's likely. It's it looks like it's due for a bit of a pullback. So uh, you might want to preserve that profit. But that's excellent. That's excellent profit that you have in that so uh, that's very very good uh, uh qcom uh lost a lot today is it, uh, going to the bottom okay let's look at qcom c q c o m q c o m and that's qualcomm yeah look at that wow okay this is why i think that the market may you know this is this is why i do have some concern about the overall market because Qualcomm is a leader, and the fact that it's fallen below the 21-day exponential, that's the green line here, uh, that's very significant because I do believe that, yeah, it's off $11. Uh, yeah, this is, a major sell, this is a major sell signal, by the way, on Qualcomm. We have, we have exceedingly high volume. And by the way, this is exponential chart here um, on, the, this, on, on this. This is, a, this is an exponential this is an exponential chart here with this volume spike. So, yeah, definitely people are moving yeah, with a 90. and a, yeah, Okay, people are going to be moving out of this issue. Here's what's going to happen, looks like, on this chart. Now, I don't know if this is, is, is potentially a short. I think it's too early for that. But I do kind of see a bit of a, a, bit of a shoulder here. I think what's going to happen is it's going to pull down below this below the 40-day line and then it's going to form another shoulder here and if that is the case then if it collapses below that 40-day line again this is a short so i'm going to put i'm i'm going to put qualcomm on my list for shorts potentially when the market direction changes and i do believe it is going to change q c o m that's going to be possible shorts Okay, this is a po not yet, but this is a possible short. So, what I would consider doing if if I have a little bit of profit in this one, I'd consider possibly um, you know moving out of this one now. I do think it looks like it's it may rally one more time, and then I think it probably is going to go lower. It looks like to me, uh, but you never can tell. You you never never can tell on that. Um, so that's kind of where I'm looking at that one. Brother versus brother, is sale a cup? Uh, from October 13th to now, trying to learn the formations. Fantastic. Thank you for this question. I'm going to try to, you know, put out some more educational video. I'm just trying to figure out 
myself on technically how to make some of these videos. I'm not the greatest technically in the world, so I'm gonna I'm trying to to um, you know to 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 make some of these videos in a way that uh, that um, you know that 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 it can show this. I don't think this is actually a cup yet. It, it, there was too much of an upward trend here. You see, what happened was this this went above. So this isn't really technically a cup. Uh, this isn't really a te technically a cup formation yet. Uh, it does it does it is wide enough, but it doesn't it doesn't seem to be low enough. So I can't give you I can't say if that's that that's not really a cup. Let's let's find let's let's find a. Um, you know, let's let's find one that is potentially, um, you know, a good cup powder that I can show you kind of how they look uh, in real time. So let me go here to my uh, which one probably does have a cup. Let's look at Twilio. I think that that has a cup. Yeah, it has a cup pattern, it's just as I suspected. And by the way, this is one of the very best stocks right now to buy. Believe it or not, it's Twilio. Kind of expensive at 341, but excellent chart pattern. As you can see with the cup pattern, and I don't know if you can see this, it it basically it, it has to be at least eight weeks wide, and definitely is that the case because it started this cup pattern at the end of September, and of course it 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 basically it went all the way to the top here, and then it then it moved down, but but this middle part here it didn't move above the neckline. That's what they call the neckline. And it, it came right back up here. It went right above, right above the the high here, and then it pulled back. And so the buy point on this one is right here, at uh, 332. Um, it, at, at, at 332. Now it's above that a little bit, and it does have slightly a downward a downward movement on that. So so that is that is a cup pattern. On again. This will helpfully help you learn a little bit about how how that is. But this is a cup pattern right here, and of course I've drawn it's drawn in there so you can see it. So sale wasn't, but uh, but uh, Twilio definitely is a cup pattern. All right, um, question about eBay. I um, <clears throat> Hi Jim, what do you think about eBay? Uh, very much. Oh yeah, th okay. I do like eBay. Uh, I really do. But let's look at it. E B A Y. And let's. Yeah. Okay. It does have a bit of a downward trend. I just don't like to buy on a downward trend. That's. It's just. Uh, you know. That's something I. I always look for. Always to find the trend. Go to that weekly chart, and take a look at where it made its high. And this is where it kind of made its high, and draw a line. And unfortunately. The the top of this here is is higher than this, so this is a downward trend. So currently, unfortunately, I don't I'm not really that interested in eBay, though I like the company a lot. But let's look at some of the other criteria. Yeah, the checklist uh, is is okay, six out of nine, and the funds are definitely there. But the problem is with eBay, it has this downward trend, as I, as I said before, but it also has a low relative strength. I'd like to see at least an 80. And it does have increasing sales, which is good. But um, and we do have fund ownership in here. But here's the thing. Uh, eBay is has a downward trend, and you just don't want to buy in that downward trend. So I would have to um, <coughs> I would have to say about eBay, I don't think it's the right one, at least for right now. Uh, definitely could be potentially a, um, a watch list, but it is not. Uh, it it is it is not a a buy right now. Uh, how are you? Okay, uh, that guy Frankie. <laughs> that's from uh, that's from TikTok. That guy Frankie says, uh, "How are you viewing these stocks?" Well, I actually use uh, professional software. Um, it's available to actually to anybody. Um, it's from uh, I I Investor Business Daily. It's called MarketSmith, and it's quite powerful. Um, that's what I use. I don't get any commissions from them. I wish I did because it's a great software. That's 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 what I do. That's what I do use. So um, for everybody out there. All right. So um, let's see. That was the question about sale. Uh, oh, Etsy. Okay. Hi, Jim. What do you think about Etsy? <laughs> I was looking at eBay, not Etsy, and I apologize for that. Yeah, eBay unfortunately is not a buy right now. I like the company. But um, but now Etsy is a totally different story. Etsy is a buy, by the way. 
Um, again, very nice relative strength at 97, really liking that. Um, <clears throat> we also have a very strong checklist at 100%. doesn't get any better than that, folks. Uh, we also have very nice ownership in there. It's increasing. The question is, can we buy this thing? Wow, the last time we really had a cut base on this, it was at 141. It's at 170 right now. So it's extended very much above that. <coughs> That's not saying we can't buy it. But there is a secondary buy point on a consolidation basis. I don't know if we can get this uh, because it looks like it's moving higher than that. But um, there is a buy point at 154.88. <coughs> so it's up four dollars <coughs> and seventy-two cents today. But on this one, we're just going to have to probably wait until there's a pullback, and I, you know, and this is going to be hard. So you're going to have to watch this one. This one. Uh, you need either a pullback to this 154.88, and then you might want to set an alert on that. So I'm going to set an alert on that uh, at, uh, let's see if I can do screens. Uh, okay. On the alert. Oh, enter the journal uh, notes. Okay, alerts. Um, so I'm going to set an alert. Let's filter. Okay. So I'm going to set an alert on Etsy. And... Um, the alert I'm going to set is at um, 154.88. There we go. All right, I'm going to set an alert there uh, <coughs> at 154.88. Uh, Etsy is definitely buyable, but you, because you don't want to buy it right now. <coughs> you want to see if it if it pulls back a little bit to that to that buy point where where we're, we're extended. Right now, you could buy it at this point, but I think that it's a little bit too far extended. Wait for a a red bar, a down day, and then a reversal on that down day, and I think you could uh, you, you could probably get it very nicely. But uh, the buy point on this is 154 for um, for Etsy, so that's uh, that's a good number for for that. Um, okay, uh, what kind of uh, what kind is Mr. to <laughs> continue is a uh, I'm not rich, but I'm making money. Uh, thanks. Oh, hey, thank you very, very much. Well, <coughs> it's actually my hope to help a lot of people um, to help a lot of people make money. It's interesting how you know, just you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to trade, uh, help other people trade as I learned to trade. I mean, it took me a long time, but um, one of the things I did was I was I got a book, and I just want to kind of show it to you on the screen. I don't know if you can see this or not. Uh, ooh, I guess it's upside down. Maybe I could, maybe I could, there we go. Uh, there you could see it. How to make money in stocks: A winning system, good times or bad. Now this one's my Matthew Galgani. Um, there's also another one by William O'Neill that I think that you know it's definitely worth your time to to do that. Um, it's on my website, but I seem to have an issue with my Amazon feed right now, so um, you can't you you can't click through to it. But you can buy it in any bookstore. It's how to make money in stocks and winning system, good times or bad. And uh, that's definitely, you know, a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about is explained there. A lot of the stuff I'm talking is kind of shorthand. I'm, you know, like 10-day line and 21-day exponential and all that stuff. But it's all in there. And um, I really appreciate that comment. Um, you know, hopefully I, I'm going to try to be put out more educational stuff. You know, it's, it's hard basically to do stuff in a minute, but I'm going to try to do that. Um, you know, I, I'm going to try to do that. Thank you, Salish. Uh, BAC, this is Bank America Corp. Buying point. Now, I would, before I get into this one, I, I, I think you better be very careful about Bank of America. Um, it, it has been moving up as of late, but it's pulled back again. It's very weak stock. Uh, it just, I don't think, you know, I know that, uh, you know, this is a kind of a Warren Buffett stock, but I just, I just think you have to be careful with this one. Uh, right now, with the interest rates so low, the banks are not making a lot of profit. And this has a very low relative strength at 45. It's been pulling back. It's 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 got a downward trend. I'll show you this. Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, it still has a down. It still has a downward trend here. It is it is it is moving right above the. the you know, it has sort of. It may have reversed here. I believe it may have reversed. And basically, this is the, what they call the golden cross, where this red line goes above the black line. That's that's. That's where it changed direction, and that's relatively that that's that's about a week ago, so I can see why you're interested in it. But I just I don't like this area at all. 
Uh, even though this is one of the money center banks, the, the checklist is only four out of nine. I'm looking for at least six out of nine. And the ownership is actually decreasing. And I want to show you this. This is very, very key. When a, What moves a stock is not individual investors like you and me. We just simply don't have enough money to, to, to move a stock. What moves a stock are institutional investors. If you look at Bank of America Company, it has a lot of institutional investors that are in the stock, but they're pulling out, and you don't want to be you don't want to be there when the when the party ends. I mean, this is sort of like you know this is, this is sort of like uh, you know that that game where you know you march around a table and they start pulling chairs out. I don't think you want to be in in um, Bank of America. The, the chart does not, unfortunately, uh, bode well for them at least for right now. Um, Harris, thank you very, very much for the question. Uh, I B O P, and let's take a look at that. And that's Social Cap. Interesting, the blank check company. You know, I don't know this one. Uh, I am not very. Um, I do not recommend blank check companies, only because I don't know what they're investing in. That's the main. That's the main issue that I have with them, is that I need to know kind of more about them before I can invest in them. So I would have to take a pass on this one. Uh, it's true. There are people that have made money in these SPACs, but it's just, uh, I think it's, I think it's a tough, I, I think it's a very, very tough way to go. So I'm going to take a, I'm going to take a, um, a flyer on that one. Okay. So here we go. Uh, the question about Dash. And of course, you know, Airbnb came out yesterday and DoorDash came out today. So let's look at Dash. Now, typically I don't like to buy a IPO until it's been out for at least, um, three months. And the reason is, is because you get these these spikes like this, and that's exactly what happened. It came out of the door. <laughs> it, 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 it IPO'd at, um, at 102, and then it just shot up to the moon, 195, and then everybody sold out, and it's now down to 147. Just not what you just don't want to do that. You just don't want to buy like that. Uh, <clears throat> you know, this is why professional investors, this is what professional investors do. They they get everybody excited about the issue, and then they then they get the hype in there. They come out of the gate, they 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 buy it really rapidly, so it appears as if it's going up. And then when every all the retail investors are uh, basically lured in, they start selling and they start selling hard. And this is exactly what has happened. So there was a lot of initial interest in this. Everybody got very got very excited, and then there was some there was some selling off. So. Just, just not a good place to be when it comes to it. So, it's time. You know, I'm not saying never, never buy DoorDash, but uh, you want to wait about three months, and uh, and it, until it forms what they call an IPO base, and then you can then you can buy it. So, uh, let's look at Airbnb, A, B, and B, and of course this is the one that uh, IPO yesterday. And again, I'm not in the stock, obviously, because I typically don't buy. Um, um, I don't buy IPOs the first day because they almost always do this. And as you can see, this is the same pattern. It just goes to the moon and then it pulls right back, almost to where it started out. So, this is the kind of thing you got to be you got to be careful on. Now, that's not saying that you can't buy IPOs. I I've been buying an IPO called Palantir, P L T R, which uh, I didn't buy it at the open, uh, but it, as you can see, it's it's actually moving up, but it's it's gone through. It, it's 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 a little bit. As you can see, we have we're we're in it three months. One, two, three. We're in it three months, and it's starting to be viable. I started buying this right, basically at three months when I when I could start buying this. So, this is the kind of thing you want to you know, you 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 want to have happen uh, before you uh, before you buy an IPO. If it, if it put it, you know even though this is moving up, you see it's over a period of time of about three months. So, uh, that's typically how you know, how it works. So you can do very well in IPOs, but I'm just saying be careful. Uh, DoorDash, I think it should be on the watch list. Um, and um, Dash and uh, also A, B, and B. But these are, um, these are our watch list, um, you know, watch list uh, IPOs. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Mark G uh, went with T. TBIO and increased dramatically. Can you look at it? absolutely? Let's take a look at TBIO. TBIO. All right. Uh, let's look at this stock. 
And this is Translate Bio. Interesting. Develops therapeutics for treatment of disease caused by gene dysfunction. So this is, a, I like the space, by the way. Um, currently, it's uh, got a 93 relative strength. That is good. 25, I like that price. Two up $2.94. So very nice there. Um, we've got, incre oh, I like this too. Yeah, this is very good. Uh, we've got increasing um, we've, we've got increasing sales. I like that. We have increasing fund ownership. like that. We're still, we're still cash flow negative, but that for, um, for a, um, you know, for a, a, a bio company, that's not unusual at all. Um, let's look at the checklist. Wow, this is good. Yeah. A definitely green light on this one. This is a, this is a good stock. Uh, this is a very good stock. And the question is, where could we buy this? You know, that's always the key. You know, where is their entry? And it doesn't look like I have a really good entry on this one. Basically, the only place it could be bought is at the 10-day uh, or the 21-day exponential uh, on the pullback. And, and we're not there yet, but we've definitely had some nice volume. Um, wow. Okay. Um, definitely, this is going to be viable if it moves above 28 uh, oh nine, and I know this sounds very strange to you. Why wouldn't you want to buy it at a lower price? Why are you? Why would you? Why do you want to wait for a higher price in order to buy the stock? Well, the reason that you do is because when it moves to a higher price, there's more commitment in it from what they call the strong hands. The strong hands are typically the funds that own it. So we want that that fund ownership. We want a high level of fund ownership before we come in. Now we have, this has got a very high level of fund ownership at 48%. Typically, a stock will appreciate the most between a fund ownership of about 20% on up to about 65%. So we're right in that sweet spot. Now, I want to wait until it moves above a certain level because that way, um, you know, that way it's going to show conviction. So this is not, a, you can't really buy this right now. It's excellent to put on the watch list. And Mark, if you got in this uh, you, you've done very, very well. It's, that's, it's, um, it's very good. I, I, I suspect you got in probably, you know, in the 12 to $14 range, it looks like. Uh, you've done very, very well. Um, and it's pulled above 21, so that was sort of, there seems to be a bit of consolidation right here at the 21-day level. So let's see if we could buy it off of that. This is really not a good buy point, but it is possible to, yeah, exactly, okay. So, at 25. So what I would do is I think this is going to pull back here from about 2509. It's probably going to pull back to this consolidated area here. Um, and so it might give you just one more chance to buy it. This this looks like a high tight flag a little bit. Um, it really have to look at the weekly chart to see that. Yeah, you know, we're still not really there. Um, but if we get two or three more weeks of this consolidation here, I think it could rock it rocket higher but uh, we don't probably want to buy it uh, at this level we probably want to wait a little bit until it can move above its higher high and if it if it is at a higher high it's going to be above about 26 so if it can pull above about 26 25 i think it might be a buy that's it's amazing and i'm going to put that down on um you know on my buy list this one is b-i-o-g b-i-o is that right uh, T bio, T B I O. This is a buy list. Okay, so P T bio. So thank you for that one, very much. That that one looks like a winner, uh, absolutely a winner, there uh, on that one. So let's go to the next question. Um, let's see, let's see if anybody. Um. Uh, I have 20s CrowdStrike. I'd probably close CrowdStrike uh, right now. What about Moderna? I've bought so many options on Pfizer. <laughs> okay, on Pfizer. What do you think? Sell or keep? You know what? I think Pfizer's going to move lower. Uh, I know that sounds sounds weird. Why would I say that? Well, um, I think that uh, the the business for the vaccine is heating up, and it looks as if there may be a, a, a drug that's been around for a long, long time that may be almost as good. So I would be careful, um, you know, having this much Pfizer 
especially Pfizer options. If you're in the money on some of these, I you know, I would you know I would think I would think about selling. Um, we we don't we we're still weak on this. We only have a relative strength of 55, and you know um, we do have increasing fund ownership. Well, we have decreasing just slightly, and we're 509. You know, I just can't get excited about Pfizer, even though they have this vaccine. I just think that there's a lot of other things that that may be papering over. So. I'm not sure that that is the best place to be in Pfizer. So if I had some, I, I, I would try to thin a little bit. Uh, it'd probably be a good idea to be thinning a little bit on Pfizer. Um, hi, is Snap reversing? Good question. And I do like Snap as a, as a um, S-N-A-P. Let's see if we've got a reversal on Snap. Um, oh boy, this looks good. I haven't been looking at Snap in about two days. Um, is this a reversal? Not really. Well, this isn't this isn't really even a reversal because it didn't pull below the the the, the ten day line. It's a bounce. A reversal basically is where it pulls all the way down, and then the next day it just goes like that. That's the reversal. This isn't really a reversal. Um, it looks like there's some resistance right here. Um, that's, I'm seeing this here when, when it, around earnings. So when is earnings on this? When is next earnings on uh, on, on Snap? Um, it is on the 4th of February, it looks like, for Snap. That looks like when they're going to have earnings next. So hmm. is that a reversal? No, it's more like a high-tight flag, to be honest. I'm looking at this. Yeah, this is a, this is a high-tight flag. This is going higher. This is absolutely going. This is absolutely going higher. Yeah, this is definitely interesting. Uh, yeah, this is a. This is a. See this flag here. It looks like we may have just pulled beyond it. This could go much higher, actually. It's up ten percent today. Wow, Ikazawa. So it looks like it's in the start of its run. The only my only issue is the volume. So where could that go? Um, you know, if there's a pullback and a reversal, this might be a high tight flag, actually, uh, on on um, on on Snap. So let me put that on there. S N A P. Great. Thank you very much for that. Thank you very very much for that. Uh, you know that that insight. It's basically what I'm talking about here is that this sort of flag. This looks like a just a little flag pattern. One two three four wide. <coughs> These are weeks. So it looks like it may be moving higher, and it may it may take this it may take this trend. Hopefully we can get it to there. You go. So it looks like it's at the top of the channel. So let me see if I can put another channel. <coughs> um, you know what? I would be a little bit. Hmm. This may go higher, but it. I. I. I next on Monday or Tuesday. See if this thing reverses downward but it looks like it's at the top of the channel so that's what I am seeing on that anyways but uh, you know we, we shall you know time will time will tell on this one but uh, very very good sock Disney is doing amazing uh, do you think we missed the boat <laughs> still in the entry point you know what I tried to buy this one this morning on the small portfolio and I got I got shaken out of it um, so Disney you know of course gapped up uh, based on the uh, news that the the Disney Plus, they had a lot more Disney Plus people than than they thought they were. So let's go over the daily chart and kind of look at this. This is kind of an amazing chart. As you can see, there was just a really huge spike on this one, and uh, you know I got I got shaken out of it, but it's up twenty one dollars today at one seventy five seventy two with a huge, a very significant. Um, a very significant. What I suspect is going to happen with Disney is we're probably going to see a pullback, you know, on Monday or Tuesday, and then if we see a reversal off that, then it might be a good time. We may not be too late. There's really no good pattern to buy this on. This is definitely a buy on the on the news kind of kind of story. Um, you know, it's a little bit too extended to buy it. I just I'd be a little bit afraid about getting in this one because I do think that the next motion on this probably would be. A correction downward uh, on this. So, uh, any recommendations on stock to buy <laughs> for the Santa rally? You know, um, you know, I did buy, um, I did buy um, a little a Fiverr, F V R R. I don't know how well 
that will do on the Santa Rally, but I uh, kind of want to show you that one. Uh, I just bought five. I just, I just uh, increased my position of five. I had it earlier, and uh, I, I just bought it. It's, it's, it. The reason I bought it is that this is a classic reversal. Uh, basically, what happened is you can see with this bar, it, it was, it was trending downwards, and then it, it pulled below the twenty, the twenty-one day exponential, and then the next day, it, the next day it pulled right below it, and then. The next day after that, it just it just moved right up, and so I basically bought it today uh, as it moved above 200. And of course, it's at 201.39 <coughs> on oh, that reversal. So I do believe, you know, it's probably going to see eh, 210, maybe 215. So that's one that you might want to look at. I don't. It's not really a great place to buy it. I don't. I think that we've probably missed the opportunity. Uh, and I think above, the further we get from 200, the, the further away from the opportunity we are. But that's one I kind of like, um, and it's on the small portfolio. Uh, let's take a look at the small portfolio just while we're talking, just to see. Uh, as you can see, I'm I'm still largely in cash. I mean, I'm still, uh, you know, I'm still getting my sea legs. I did have, um, you know, I basically have Floor & Decor, uh, Fiverr, and Cloudflare. Not a lot in the small portfolio. I, I got shaken out of... Um, I got shaken out of, uh, of of Tesla, seven bucks. I, I spent seven bucks to find out. Not not a lot, but uh, you know, still I still like to still like to be right. Uh, but Fiverr, uh, you know, at the two hundred dollar level is pretty good. It's uh, you know, I, I actually went in the small portfolio a little bit before that when I uh, on the rebound at one ninety three, when it pulled all the way back down. Um, you know, I probably should have. You know, you always want to buy more when they win. But that's, that's that's sort of where I'm at. So I'm really in cash. I'm still looking for deals right now. And again, we are in a market that may be trending. Um, we may be trending lower. Uh, maybe trending lower. So let's take some of the last questions. Here's from, uh, this is from, oh, what about DraftKings? And this is a question from TikTok. Thanks for, um, you know, thanks for looking at me on TikTok. Uh, a lot of people have, you know, look at on TikTok. So let's look at DraftKings. Uh, D K N G, and let's bring that DraftKings up. I got shaken out of DraftKings, to be honest, on the small portfolio. I had this on the small portfolio. I got shaken out of it. It's down a little bit today. It's 50. Um, I'm looking really, you know, I thought I was going to get a nice breakout. I bought it on the pullback, just to kind of show you where I where I where I bought this one. I bought this as it was as, as it trended below this 21 day exponential line. This this green line here. This, that's this that's this green line that I that I that I just pointed out. I bought it when it pulled below that on this cup with handle, and then it and then it moved it moved higher off of that. So the real buy point on this one is this fifty three this this fifty three seventy two, and we're we're significantly below that. So what I think it might happen, and this, there might be another opportunity to buy this, but it's going to have to pull below that 21-day line again and then reverse. So I'm looking at potentially you could buy it as low as about 48, and then if it reversed, I think you'd have a good thing to go there. I do think it's moving higher because the trend overall is is upward. So pull for the weekly chart. As you can see, it still hasn't broken. It, it, it hasn't broken trend. It is an upward trend. It is an absolute upward trend on DraftKings. Uh, it did pull back, and then it has changed trend to the upside. It's looking to push off of this, the bottom part of that channel, and then once it does, we could see it come up to, you know, potentially, and I want to draw the channel right. I didn't draw it quite right. You know, we could see it, you know, we could see it basically in the 80 to, you know, $90 range right in here by um you know by 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 early january uh on DraftKings. so DraftKings is definitely even though i got shaken out of it it's definitely one that um, can be bought right now i i believe as well even though it doesn't have a great great base pattern all right so i am almost at uh the the time <laughs> here an hour um if everybody wants to take a look at the, uh, you know, to get on and get on the action trailer, it's super easy to do. All you have to do is go to, um, you know, 
is go to is subscribe on YouTube, youtube.com slash Dallas Trading Floor. Or if you want to get the act, free extra trade alerts, go to the website, www.dallastradingfloor.com and uh, sign up there. If you're interested in learning the systems that I use, the CanSlim system, the book is uh, How to Make Money in Stocks and Winning System, Good Times or Bad by William O'Neill. And it is available at Amazon and also is available on the www Dallas Trading Floor website as well. So uh, until tomorrow at 2.30, uh, everybody out there, I hope everyone's having a, a good day. Uh, happy trading. And I will see you tomorrow. I will see you on Monday at 